And so let's get right into today's topic. Today I want to deal with the topic, God's got me. God's got me. Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 26. Remember, Matthew 5, 6 and 7 are the most important chapters that you need to memorize, practice and understand because that is the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus taught us. Okay, it's really important chapters that you understand these chapters. All right, verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, but yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And so this is really important. We need to understand that God, our Father, has got us in the palm of His hand. He will take care of us. He will look after us. And He will provide for us. And this is something that we really do struggle with. Now, the reason we struggle with this is because we have a second option. You know, the birds of the air and everything around all of creation... If it wasn't for God, they would not have another option. Now, we unfortunately have a second option. <clears throat> and what's that option? Do it yourself. We come with this idea that we can do it ourselves. All right? Abur mark a plan. We are going to sort this thing out by ourselves. And unfortunately, that is not godly nor biblical. All right, the world system is designed to rob and steal and to destroy. All right, the Bible is very clear that Satan is in charge of that system. And his whole makeup, God says that the thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. So why do we find it appealing to use the world system if we know what the outcome is going to be? You know, I've seen many Christians use the world system and then come very short. You know, they'll, they'll sit down and say, listen, we will use the world system. We will be wealthy. We will do things in our own strength. And I've watched it. You know, some of the businessmen will say, you never use your own money. You use your bank's money. Well, in the 2008 crash, man, I'll tell you what, I saw many Christians really hurt. I was personally involved with one particular gentleman who lost 500 million in one day. Another one, 40 million. Another one, 60 million. I mean, you look at this and you go, this is incredible. But remember, it comes from a very simple thing. If you use the world system, you're going to get the world results. And the world system is not there to help you move forward. The world system is designed to make you a slave. So we're going to be very careful. Where is your hope? Where is your faith? Do not look at what perceives to be wealthy and successful. All right? Do not look at that thing because you must not understand that does not mean that they own everything, that they are debt free. It's a totally different thing if they are totally debt free. They don't own anything, uh, don't owe anything to anybody. And they are doing what God called them to do. It's a totally different scenario than having a debt from here until next Christmas. And so you need to understand. God is busy with us trying to transform us from relying on the world system, man's ideas, man's clever tricks, to genuinely believing God our Father. And what I like about this is it's a foundational teaching of Jesus Christ. It's the starting blocks of Christianity. Jesus Christ says, listen, make sure that your faith and your trust is in me. Make sure that you are trusting me for the supernatural. Make sure that you are believing me for the things that are going to happen on this earth. And this is so important when it comes to these things. That we believe God, we trust God, we rely on the Holy Spirit to move in our lives. 
As a saints, we need to repent. When we put our trust in the world system or our own ability or your own skill. Remember this, God gave you giftings and abilities and skills to help humanity. Not to connive, not to try and wangle something, but to help others. And so are you submitting to God, including your God-given skills and abilities? You know, many people will say to me through the years, Arthur, you've got a really good gift of teaching. I recognize from the start the gifting I have, the gift of revelation that I flow under, is a gift from God. It is not mine. I don't rely on my own abilities. I make sure that I stay submitted to God. Likewise, in my life, I've had to learn this, and I learned it very harshly in my 30s. All right? We are really had to learn, in my 30s and 40s, I had to learn how to trust God for the first time in my life. How to put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. How not to rely on any system or any person's promises. And so this morning when we come around the table, I want to ask us, are you prepared to do that this morning? Are you prepared to put your total trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? And say, Lord, you love the birds. I don't want to have an alternative. I want to learn how to trust you. I want to learn how to truly believe in you. And I want to learn how to receive from my Father directly in Jesus' name. That you will make a way for us. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. Take in remembrance of me. He took the cup. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for our physical and emotional healing. The blood of Christ was shed for our salvation, protection, and provision. So this morning, as we come around the table, let us celebrate what Jesus Christ has done and is going to do in our lives. Because he loves us. He cares for us. And he's working in our lives. Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing. We thank you for the anointing and the power of God that flows in our lives. But Lord, I pray right now that we will not rely on the world system in any manner or means. But God, we will trust you. We believe you for our provision. We believe you for our increase. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we will only have you as our source. And Lord, I pray that as we take of the elements right now, that you'll forgive us of anything that we've done wrong in Jesus' name. But that you will make yourself so real to us right now. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. All right, let's not take together. Lord, right now, I just release the dunamis power of God over our physical bodies. I thank you, Lord, that the anointing of God saturates our physical bodies and that we are healed. I command every single symptom of sickness to go. Thank you, Lord, that we walk in divine health and divine healing is ours. Thank you, Lord, that we are healed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Well, folks, I want to bless you this morning. I want to tell you it's an amazing morning to be alive. All right? And so I want to just first of all say, that tonight we are going to have our teaching um, on the small group, fellowship group teachings on tonight. And then I want to remind everybody that with our facilitator training, we are not going to have facilitator training tonight. All right, the reason is we've got the fire conference. Many of the guys are there. And so we are going to postpone it by one week. Okay, so tonight you are off. So please, I want everybody just to take note of that. It's really important. And remember this. When we are training for small, small groups across this nation, I tell you what, we are ready to move. We are ready to do what God has called us to do and go and make the difference in this nation in Jesus' name. I'm so excited about what God is doing and what he's still going to do in and through the, the believers. Amen. All right. So I want to just encourage each and every one of us that as we go, I'm, I'm flying right after the service. Um, as we ride off the communion, I'm off to Cape Town, getting ready for the fire conference. I'm going to ask you please to keep praying for those that are on the road, getting down there. And also for those that are there, that God will touch them, change them, and bring them to the place of genuine 
deliverance. I want to be set free. I want to have an encounter with the living God. I want God to touch me, soak me, change me, bring me into his presence. Because I tell you what, I want to be a better person in Jesus' name. So let's pray together. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray over our nation. Father, I thank you for the good reports that we are hearing across this nation. But Lord, I pray right now that we will see and experience the power of God in our lives like never before. Father, I thank you that we will see the hand of God in our businesses. Lord, I thank you for our businesses. Thank you, Lord, for supernatural deals, divine connections, supernatural contracts, supernatural um, provision in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that our cash flow is there. And Lord, anything that's outstanding, that the debtor's book will be small. Father, I release your blessing over our businesses. I release your blessing over our economy. Father, I thank you for every sector that they are blessed. I pray over the farmers this morning. I release your blessing over our farmers. Thank you, Lord, for awesome, awesome heals of the, of the um, harvest this year. Father, I pray your blessing over every sector. And Lord, right now, I thank you that we could build the altars and establish what needs to be established in this nation. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for every individual that is hearing your voice and doing what you call them to do. Thank you, Lord, for a prayer-based generation. Lord, that we are praying. We are seeking your face. Father, I thank you for what you are going to do in and through this nation. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I pray for the peace of Israel. Lord, I pray for the blessing of Israel. Thank you, Lord, that this war will come to an end quickly. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. All right, folks, let's get right into our declaration this morning. In Jesus' name, I declare by faith that I walk in divine favor. I have preferential treatment, supernatural increase, restoration, increased assets, great victories, recognition, prominence, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, battles won that I did not have to fight, all because of the blessing and the favor of God in my life. So saints, go out with might, go out with valor, and go and do what Jesus Christ has called you to do. Remember this, you are the light, you are the salt, and you have the authority to turn things in the atmosphere.